Hey y'all, back at it again with another Meatless Mondays. This time, I figured we'd focus on a couple things that can go in the fridge, I'd call them essentials, that can be used to finish pretty much any dish. Pickled onions, fast, easy, tasty. The second one, also pretty fast and super tasty, a smooth hot salsa. You can make it as spicy or not spicy as you want. It comes out really nice. The last one's a little more complicated and it's kind of a regional thing. If you're into jardinera, this is a little bit of a bigger batch, a little bit more work goes into it. At the end, you're gonna get this really delicious fermented jardinera that you can give out to your friends, you can put on pretty much anything. So let's get into it. We're gonna start off with pickled red onions. Super simple, take a whole red onion, cut that the long ways, not so you have big round strips. You want these long, thin, straight strips, really as thin as you want. I've found that with large size red onions, a half an onion will fit in one mason jar really well for pickling. Now while I'm doing the slicing over on the stove, I'm going to warm up a ratio of 3 to 1 vinegar and water to a light boil. After popping in whatever spices you want, I chose a couple black peppercorns and a couple cranks of salt. Pour that vinegar mixture over until they're completely submerged. I found two cups total will work out really well for this. So that would be a cup and a half vinegar and a half a cup of water. Make sure those are as submerged as possible. And we're gonna let those cool down as we move on to the next essential. For the smooth hot salsa, we're gonna start with about three cups of undrained canned tomatoes. You can certainly use fresh tomatoes here, but I feel like after an hour in the oven, the canned taste definitely leaves. We're going to add a half of a red onion chopped coarsely, one entire jalapeno unseeded chopped coarsely, one entire serrano unseeded chopped coarsely, three to four garlic cloves also chopped coarsely. To that, we're gonna add two teaspoons ground cumin and two teaspoons ground coriander and some salt and pepper to taste. At this point, we're going to blend it to the consistency that's desired. I like it pretty well blended for this application, as you can put it on pretty much anything. And we're going to coat a pan in oil and add the entire mixture to it. We're going to simmer that for about an hour to two hours, really as far as you want to go with this. It's going to reduce really nice and those flavors are really going to develop as you go. Just make sure you keep it on low and stir it occasionally and it's not boiling. We just want a light simmer. After about one to two hours, just char up that hot salsa and let it get down to room temperature so you can lit it up. Now for the jardinera. Add eight cups of water to a jar. Weigh out 66 grams of salt to create a three and a half percent brine. Definitely weigh this out so you get it correct. We're gonna add some bay leaves in there that'll keep the vegetables crunchy after fermentation. Add one teaspoon mustard seed, black peppercorns, and fennel seed. two teaspoons dried oregano, and one teaspoon of coriander seed. I use ground coriander here. Half a teaspoon of celery salt and a half a teaspoon of cayenne. Those two can be adjusted to your own palate. A 
And then we're going to put a lid on there and shake it up to make sure everything is blended. At this point, we're going to start preparing our vegetables. There are traditional vegetables that are going into a jardinera, but really it's up to your own preference. That also goes for the size of chunks that you'll be doing. I go a little larger with all of my pieces so that after fermentation, I can keep a couple of jars of larger pieces and blend some down to smaller pieces. So we're starting with a whole red onion. Gonna go with an entire red pepper as well. Now we want to make sure on every step of this process that all utensils and hands are thoroughly cleaned prior to touching anything inside. We are doing basically a controlled rot when we do a fermentation and we want to make sure we're not getting any bad bacteria into the mix when we're trying to use all that good bacteria for a proper fermentation. And as you go, just toss it into the jar. You'll start to see how full it's going to get, and you can cut back or add on some more of the veg that you really want in there. Good example for me is I really like carrots, cauliflower, and green beans, so we're going to go a little bit more on all of those. Again, just dice it down to the size that you want. We can always blend it down afterwards. For my celery, I really like to use some of these center stalks that have really fresh leafy greens. Again, we're going to get a lot of extra fermentation out of this. And I think this goes without saying, but the fresher the produce, the more active of fermentation you're going to end up getting out of it. Do remember to clean all of your produce before going into this. A clean receptacle and lightly washed veg will always come out to a nice, safe Jardinera fermentation. I used a whole head of cauliflower here. You see I just take some time cutting off some of the big meteor stem pieces and just ripping off florets and throwing them in the jar. Now this is where you can add as much or as little heat as you desire. I didn't seed the jalapeno or the serrano here, and it didn't add a ton of heat to the finished product. But if you're nervous about the heat, feel free to seed these, feel free to not add them. It's really all up to you. Off camera, I did crush two cloves of garlic and throw those in on top before I shook this up, making sure to get everything at least familiar with the brine before pushing it all down as well as you can. We want as much as possible underneath the liquid. This is a bit of a DIY fermentation weight and one-way valve. We're going to put a clean jar to press down as much vegetable under the liquid as we can and some cling wrap over the top of that with a rubber band or hair ties making sure that air is not getting in, but the burping bubbles can get out. 
Every day, I like to agitate a little bit of the bubbles, take off the top, and make sure all the vegetables are still getting submerged. You can see here, after a day or two, the bubbles are really forming. It's really active. You can start to smell the process happening. After you've found the point of fermentation that you're happy with, we can add about three and a half tablespoons of sugar and a quarter cup of vinegar. It's really just going to brighten up the entire amount of jardinera, take away some of that brine, but while keeping that funk around. Like stated previously, I like to keep a couple jars around with bigger pieces for something like an antipasto or a pasta salad. And I take the remainder, blend it down to whatever desired level you'd like. This one I went pretty far, and the next one I did a little less. After jarring up the desired amount, pour some of that delicious brine so it covers everything. This batch here yielded about four full jars and one extra jar of brine that I'm going to make a vinaigrette with later. After each of the warm items is at least room temperature, we lit them up, slap a label on it, throw it in the fridge. Small example of how to make a really fast, easy breakfast pop that much more. Scrambled up some eggs, threw them on a tortilla with those pickled onions, and our hot blended salsa out of the fridge. And you've got a very tasty breakfast burrito done in less than five minutes. That acid from the pickled red onions and the spice from the salsa will really spice up your breakfast. That's it for this week's episode. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help us out. Don't forget to check out last week's video as well. And come back again next week for another vegetarian or vegan blast from the past.